For this week's On Reported World, I've been to Mexico to see how the whole tourist industry is at risk of being destroyed. The drug wars are well known and generally kept away from the beach resorts. But right now, there is a new threat, even in places like Cancun. Now, normally on one of these trips, I go in search of the story. But this time, it very much came to us. And be warned, there are scenes of gang violence you may find disturbing. It's six o'clock, just before sunset on the main beach in Cancun. But amid the tourists, something terrible has happened. Right by the sunbeds outside a luxury hotel, in what's supposed to be one of the safest places in Mexico, a man has been gunned down in the sand. Atrás de la cinta. Four men came in through this hotel and attacked one person who was severely injured but not killed. I have to say, there is very little police presence on this beach, and this is right in the heart of Tourist Central. These are all luxury five-star hotels. Yeah. Hi there, do you speak English? We do. Are you aware that there's been a shooting here on the beach? No. Shooting? No. Yeah, just right there. When? Just now, about an hour ago, yeah. What? I wouldn't have expected something like that here. It's as if the police don't want anyone to notice. There's minimum fuss and hardly any officers here. This is the third shooting on the beach in Cancun this year. But if, as a prospective tourist, you try and find news about that on the internet, you will struggle. And we've been told that local politicians here have put the press under pressure not to report violence in this area, because if the tourists are scared away from here, it'll be an economic disaster not just for Cancun, but for Mexico. The victim is Bruno Gonzalez, a local man in his 20s working as a beach vendor. He's been shot in the head and is in a critical condition. Later that night, we hear he has died. The party goers in Cancun's bars may not realize, but the murder rate has doubled in a year and most of the killings go unsolved. There's a thriving drug trade here, and the beach vendor's death could be related to it. But people are telling me there's another likely explanation. I've arranged to meet one of the city's leading businessmen. Hello. 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 Nice to meet you, Hernan. Nice to meet you, Hernan Cordero. And so this is your development? Yes, I am a developer. I construct and I made all, all this. Hernan says everyone working in tourism here is now a target for extortion. He's been threatened himself. Y me dijeron que eran de una asociación de narcotraficantes que se llaman Los Zetas. Son muy violentos. Y entonces me dijeron que pues me estaban observando y que pues tenía que ponerme de acuerdo con ellos y pagarles un dinero. Hernán says extortion threats have tripled in Cancún in a year as criminals try to bleed the multi-billion dollar tourism industry. He says he hasn't paid, but many others do. Restaurantes, tiendas de ropa, tiendas de muebles, eh, las discotecas. All these people tell you that they're being targeted? Yes. Por ejemplo, las grandes discotecas eh, llevan años negociando con los cárteles. Muchas veces les rebajan, les hacen una rebaja, dependiendo que si es temporada alta o baja, como si fuera un socio ya. This is the best uh, ocean view that we have here. Hernan now thinks Cancun is on the brink of ruin, just like other famous Mexican resorts. Acapulco tuvo el mismo problema hace algunos años y no se paró. What do you fear will happen here? Nos podríamos convertir en otro pueblo fantasma como se convirtió Acapulco. I 
I decide to head to Acapulco. Once one of the most glamorous places in the world, it's now the murder capital of Mexico. The city is a short drive from the airport on a major drug transport route. We've just landed in Acapulco, but within five minutes of getting in the car, we got a tip off that four bodies have been found quite close to here. So we're heading straight there. This is cartel land. 45% of the heroin sold in America comes from opium poppies grown in these mountains. This is far too gruesome and shocking to really show you on television, but what I can see is three boys and maybe one adult man. Just teenagers, really, and they've been shot to death and possibly dumped here. They're essentially children. The victims are from the same family. Isaac, Ernesto, Pablo, and their father, Jorge. They were mountain farmers. Around here, many have little choice but to grow opium poppies for the cartels. So they will have been brought here and killed? There's a lot of fear here about what was behind this. We've literally just stepped off a plane and driven straight here to this horrible scene of what seems to have been children walked down here in the middle of nowhere, sat on the ground under a bridge and shot in the head. And it makes you wonder what kind of person does this. The ultra-violence here has investigators overwhelmed. Sometimes they visit 10 murder scenes a day. The police have taken the bodies now. There's no more forensic work going on, and they're going to leave. And as soon as they leave, we've got to get out of here too, because the cartels have lookouts here, and it won't be safe for us to stay. This is what Acapulco used to be famous for, the cliff divers at La Cabrada seen from the terrace of the Mirador Hotel, where everyone from Frank Sinatra to Elvis Presley once came to stay. I'm here to meet Laura Caballero, a local restaurateur who's lived here since she was a girl. Are these all the stars? This is a place that was visited by the stars. And look, there are some photographs still. For example, Frank Sinatra visited. Do you remember what this place was like? Claro, era un lugar lleno de, de, de visitantes. Tú no podías llegar a este hotel porque este hotel tenías que hacer reservaciones para visitarlo. This is one of the most beautiful views in the world. And we are the only people here. Este es Acapulco ahora. Ni un turista. Hay hoteles, grandes hoteles, pues solamente tienen una habitación ocupada. The city is so dangerous now that troops patrol the streets and beaches. Since arriving, I haven't seen any foreign tourists here. Lara used to have eight businesses along Acapulco's main strip. This one was the last to close. Este es mi negocio. En este local tenemos más de 40 años ya este, trabajando, sirviendo al turismo. Y tiene un poquito más de dos años que lo cerramos. So why did you have to close? El tema de la extorsión. Y llegaron un día y estaban pidiendo de 15 a 20 mil pesos mensuales. What percentage of your money did they want? Probablemente un 30, 40 por ciento de los de las ganancias. Weren't you afraid? Pues todos tenemos miedo. Sí, sí, sí me dio miedo. Laura has seen two murders in Acapulco with her own eyes. No es bonito salir a la calle y encontrarte con una cabeza. Es muy triste 
saber que uno de tus amigos ha sido ejecutado, médicos, taxistas, doctores, comerciantes, cualquier clase social, no estás exento. That night, the violence of the city strikes close to us. We've just heard three gunshots right outside our hotel. No grabes, no grabes. It's too dangerous to film openly. The gunman might still be here, so we use our phones. A taxi driver is lying in the street where the cabs normally wait. It's very tense at the moment. The police aren't here yet. It's too dangerous to openly film now because there will still be scouts here waiting, and that man is alive. The police arrive and start to secure the area, but it's too late. The man is dead. The relatives have just arrived and this has just turned into an extraordinarily distressing scene. One of the relatives approaches us. En el sitio de ahí, en el sitio de allá, ellos le mandaron al cobra cuota, ¿eh? Y querían que él a fuerza cobrara cuota. Y yo no quiero que esto quede impune, quiero justicia, porque ya estuvo bueno de tanto estar pagando cuotas. Taxi drivers are often victims of extortion, but the gangs also force them to collect money from others too. This is the main tourist strip in Acapulco. It's supposed to be the safest part of the city, and this is why Acapulco is now a no-go zone. The family won't let the police take the body away. There's so little trust in the authorities. Instead, they put him in the back of a taxi and take him home. Within minutes, you'd never know anything had happened here. I want to know more about the taxi driver's murder, so I've come to meet a colleague whose identity we have to protect. That man's relative said he was being forced to collect money from other drivers and that he'd said no. Does that sound plausible to you? Puede suceder, no creas que no, porque la verdad este está muy peligroso Acapulco. Why do you do this then if it's so dangerous? Porque toda mi vida desde joven que tenía yo 18 años he sido taxista. Pues es peligroso, pero hasta trabajando en un hotel es peligroso, trabajando en un restaurante es peligroso, todo es peligroso. Acapulco has been called the most dangerous city in the world for taxi drivers. More than 130 were murdered last year. Extortion isn't just happening in the city. In nearby coastal villages where the police rarely go, people have even less protection. I'm heading to the fishing village of Barra Vieja. It was popular with visiting tourists until the gangs moved in. But I've heard the community here is fighting back. People have become so fed up with the violence that in places they've organized themselves into groups of vigilantes. They call themselves the community police. And I've come here to meet the man who inspired people in this area to rise up against the extortion gangs. René Azuna has been a fisherman here all his life. It's a simple existence, making just enough money to live. But he watched with horror as his friends in this poor community fell into the grip of extortion gangs. Eh, venían, que dame un pescado, y si no se lo quería, si quería todo, y si no te mataba, te mataba. That's intolerable. They kill you for a fish. A veces por un pescado te matan, porque no se lo dan. Mm. Our 
after fishing, it's time to hunt criminals. Tonight, they're searching for a man they say is a gang leader known as El Huicho. He hecho varias llamadas por teléfono a restauranteros que quiere dinero y los amenaza. Pero hoy ya no llega a su casa, anda escondido. Pero sí lo buscamos para eliminarlo. Muerto el perro, se acaba la rabia. How many people have you killed? Hemos liquidado como unas seis, siete personas. Pero pura persona de delincuente. Puro delincuente, cobra cuotas, eh, que cortan en pedazos. En la vida civil, soy un, una gran persona. This time there's no sign of El Huicho, but René's group will keep looking because they believe the police won't stop him. The police say René's group is operating outside the law, but René and his men claim they've made the area safe again in just over a year. Chris. Do you give any support to the community police? Do you give them money or food or anything like that? Pasan casa por casa y se les apoya con lo que uno puede. There's no doubt people here say the vigilantes have made a real difference to their security, but there is also a certain irony in the fact that this businessman said that he was never being extorted before, but now he pays a contribution to the costs of the community police. You could describe it as protection money. Having seen the way Acapulco has been wrecked by extortion, I'm heading back to Cancun. There's been another shocking murder. A well-known police commander and his wife, also in the force, have been shot dead. Their eight-month-old baby nephew was also hit and died later in hospital. No wonder the US State Department has just warned tourists about traveling here. Even in such a high-profile case, nobody's been charged or arrested. To find out why, I'm going to see the state prosecutor. The prosecutor's office here has become a big target for the criminal gangs. Earlier this year, it was attacked by men on motorcycles who opened fire with assault weapons. There are bullet holes all the way across the front of this building. Armed guards protect the chief prosecutor, Miguel Angel Pechsen. People have said to us that impunity is the big problem here. Why are so few cases taken to prosecution? Nosotros no podemos presionar a la gente que por el temor, por el miedo a que además de la fa del familiar fallecido fallezca otro o el mismo informante. Esto ha sido parte de la del por qué no hemos ampliado la investigación. And what do you think of the American judgment that Cancun is now dangerous for tourists to come to? No es una prohibición no vengan a Cancún, sino en Cancún hay problemas, tengan cuidado. In the face of this growing wave of violence, I'm meeting Teresa Carmona, whose son was murdered, but is trying a different approach to dealing with it. Hi. Teresa, Hi. I'm Christian. Hi, Christian. Very nice to meet you. Nice. You started doing this because you lost your own son. Can you tell me what happened there? Like many mothers in this country, one day I received a phone call. It was a Saturday morning. And uh, from a friend. And he told me, they killed Joaquin. They killed Joaquin. Joaquin was 21 years old. And he was the joy of my life. He was my firstborn. So that was, um, well, everything changed from that moment. And I've been trying to make visible the, the violence in the country. Teresa does that in a unique and powerful way. For every new killing in Cancun, she embroiders a cloth telling the story of the victim. So far, she's made over 80. 
Embroidering, it's a loving thing we do. Our mothers and grandmothers used to embroider their, their loved one's name on the handkerchiefs or on the sheets of the beds. Her latest handkerchief is for the murdered police couple and their baby nephew. We are keeping their memory alive. Without memory, we cannot have truth, and without truth, we cannot have justice. The cancer of this country is impunity, because what happens if you go into a shopping mall and kill the family? Nothing happens, so why not do it? Every Sunday, Teresa hangs her murder embroidery in the park. The first one she made was for her own son. He was shot dead in his apartment seven years ago. The murder has never been solved. This is Joaquin's handkerchief. It's very pretty. It, it is. And I'm always thinking of adding some more stitches. As the park fills up, people notice Teresa's work and come to see it. She always invites the passers-by to join her and do some embroidery themselves, a moment of peaceful resistance to the normalization of killing. What do you think people get from doing this when they join you? It's a creative way to say, eh, we resist. In this little cor corner of the world, uh, humanity has not succumbed. When you talk to officials here, it's hard not to feel that they are either in denial or desperately trying not to scare the outside world. In five days, we've covered three shootings, two of them fatal, one on this very beach. Cancun isn't yet as dangerous as Acapulco, but all the conditions are here for it too to be destroyed by drugs, violence and extortion. Thanks for watching this Unreported World episode. Click the logo to subscribe for more award-winning documentaries from the Unreported World team. We upload videos every Wednesday and Sunday, keeping you up to date with content from all over the world.